Hey guys, so I was finally able to finish up this video. It's taken me forever, I know. I know a lot of you have been asking about it, uh, but I finally got it done. Uh, my camera did end up missing some of the shots when I was deleting it, uh, so it's not the best video out there, but I kind of explained, you know, how the EGR works and what exactly I'm doing. Um, it shows most of the necessary steps, what you got to do, and kind of just the general overlook on everything. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them down there in the comment section. Uh, I'll get back to them as quickly as I can. So to begin, up in the left corner where the arrow's at, we have our EGR cooler. Now all this is going to have to come out. Um, on the right side, uh, we have your air intake horn, and you're going to take all that junk off on top. So as you can see, we took off everything that's on top. There's also a plug down at the bottom of that that you're going to have to pull out. Uh, this way it disables all your uh, rerouting uh, to the EGR. As you can see right here with the arrow, there's a tube that crosses over. Take that tube off, you know, pretty much first thing. Uh, it gives you a little bit more room to work around. After this, the video just kind of sped up. This way you can see a little tedious screws that we have to take out. Um, it's just one at a time. I, it's relatively easy, except for it takes a lot of time. Uh, everything's pretty tight in there and in weird positions. Um, so you'll see us screwing around uh, for most of the time just trying to get everything out. So just a quick suggestion, go ahead and take out your air intake right off the bat. It'll give you a lot more room to kind of get in there and get some of those nuts out of there. Uh, please, though, put something in your air intake. That, that hole right there, put a cloth or a net or something in there. This way you don't drop any nuts or, you know, screwdrivers, wrenches, anything like that. Trust me, you do not want anything in that hole. Um, up in the top, you've got a band clamp. Take that band clamp off. Uh, that's going to allow you to remove the EGR in two separate spots. It'll make it a lot easier pulling it all out. Um, as well, on the left side, you have a pop clip. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what that pop clip does. I'm pretty sure it's something with back pressure to let the EGR know to turn on. Um, go ahead and take that off right off the bat as well. It'll get out of the way for when you start unscrewing everything else that's over in that corner and you won't damage anything. So once again, back to the fast forwarding, it's just a ton of little bolts that you're going to have to take out. Super tedious and lots of time to get all these things out. Uh, we definitely had some knuckle bleeding by the end of this. So as you can see on the right side, my buddy goes ahead and puts on his plate. Now he tried to put it on with the stock factory bolts. Now it should come with the bolts. Uh, he didn't realize that at first, but I had to explain it to him. Um, the gaskets go on the bottom of that, two of them. They're kind of difficult to get in there. So I kind of want to explain exactly what the EGR does. Um, basically, it just recycles your exhaust gases. Um, when you're driving your truck, towing, lugging it, uh, whatever you're doing, there's a little bit of soot that actually comes out of these motors. Now, for factory, they're tuned pretty well to where there's like maybe a light haze. Uh, so you usually don't have any issues with this till you're a little bit higher in your mileage or if you let it idle for a long time. Um, but what happens is the exhaust will come out of the motor uh, through your exhaust manifold. And then there's actually a route that goes up from underneath uh, the exhaust manifold and into the EGR cooler. Now the EGR cooler has tons and tons of little veins in it and there's of course coolant that's going through it. Now the exhaust gas gets cooled down. I'm not sure how cool it gets because that stuff is crazy hot when it comes right out of the exhaust manifold. Um, but it cools it down and then there's a tube that actually crosses from the uh, EGR over into your air intake horn. Now your air intake horn actually has a flange in there that'll move back and forth and it'll let the exhaust gases flow back into your motor. Now, of course, this isn't a very good thing because nobody wants exhaust gases flowing back into their motor um, because you get unfresh air and it's warm air, you know, so you're kind of losing power and etc. You never really want warm air to go in. That's kind of why they make cold air intakes. Um, but for some reason, they put these stupid things on the truck. 
So you can see that I keep wiggling everything because that's the only way to really figure out what nut and bolt is still holding on to everything. Uh, we did find the pop clip up top. That pop clip is so difficult to get out. Uh, however, it has to come out in order for you to take all that crap out of there. So actually on top of that, um, what we just took off is actually a little motor. And this motor is what allows the exhaust to flow from the EGR through the tube and then back into your air intake. So you basically just took that off. So right here on the right hand side, I end up going in there and pulling out the rest of the pop clips in the back. Um, not all of them need to be removed. There's just one back there and it's kind of kind of tricky to get to, but just one needs to be removed. If you remove the wrong one, you'll get an error code on your uh, dash, but it's pretty easy to fix by just plugging in the other ones and just doing a trial and error. But back to how exactly the EGR works. So after it's been recycled, of course it comes back out the exhaust, um, which increases your EGTs. Now you always want cooler EGTs because technically it's bad for your turbo and all that nonsense. Um, the turbos do sit really low on these trucks, you know, way out of the way, uh, almost like underneath the passenger seat. Um, but it enters the turbo, spools the turbo, you know, viola power. Uh, but then after that, it goes down and it'll actually go into your uh, DPF filters. And now your DPF filters is what's going to collect all the other little particles of soot that's going to come out. Um, you also have a cat in there, you know, to try and keep down on your other emission levels. Um, but basically, then you're going to have your DPF fluid. Um, and it's going to spray in. It's basically like, I think it's 67% water. Um, the rest of it is like urea, it's basically cat pee. Um, that's just going to get sprayed in there periodically to help clean out all that crap. Uh, but if you look inside of a DPF filter, it is so compact in there. So right now he's actually working on that band clamp. It's super tricky to get off, uh, but once you get that clip off of there, then you can basically take the EGR cooler apart in two different sections. Um, once you get that thing loose, just pry on it and it'll slowly pop off. It's a pain in the ass, but... So back to the whole DPF portion of it. Uh, if you look down into uh, the filter, it's so compact in there that it's no surprise why we have so much back pressure and everything on our uh, motors. Um, I don't know really how the exhaust even gets through because once you delete all this crap out of there, and I, I ended up going with a five inch exhaust, um, the amount of exhaust that flows out of these things afterwards is just incredible compared to what they are. I mean, there's so much back pressure that it just lugs the crap out of your motor. So right here is where he gets that second section off. As you can see, now you can put one of your plates on and then you gotta start working on the actual cooler itself. So I have had a lot of questions asking if, you know, if you get any error codes or anything after you're done deleting your truck, you are not supposed to get any error codes. After you're done doing your EFI tuning, you will not have any error codes. Um, now, you may have something that you did wrong in the truck like a uh, clip that was supposed to stay on and you took that one off um, but you shouldn't have any error codes there's no error codes to this uh, whole setup so right here you're going to take off one of the tubes they're pretty hard to take off they're really tight on there just a lot of prying like with the flathead just like that and you'll be able to just slowly wiggle it off uh, just protect your knuckles so another question that I also get is do you leave your DEF tank in now I did leave my DEF tank in however I did drain it there's a super simple way to drain it right underneath there's a tube that comes out pull that off it all just comes right out um, however I do suggest filling it up with uh, not regular hose water but go ahead and get some distilled water fill it up drive around for a few drain it again maybe do it two or three times this way you get all that crap out of there um just in case if you do end up switching back to uh def but so you're going to want to keep the other end on that tube uh you're going to just want to push it out of the way because you're going to have to put it back on later you get to keep that tube and just reuse it uh, as for the other one, it's going to come out, and it should come completely out of the truck. Uh, that one's also a pain. It's actually connected to the EGR, and that's where the coolant goes into the EGR. 
uh, you will have a spare tube that comes in your kit and it'll actually bypass the EGR of course and go into that other L-shaped tube that's kind of just out of the way. Uh, I'll kind of try and show it. Another common question that I get is what horsepower tune I leave my truck on. So there's a switch that you can buy so you can go between like 30, 60, 100, and 130 horse uh, tunes. Um, they have increased some of the tunes now where they're like 30, 60, 150, 200. Uh, I'm not too sure how big of a difference all the tunes really are because it's only tuning. They're, you know, they're not changing anything really besides fueling and air, uh, airflow and all that. Um, but I commonly leave my truck on 100 plus horsepower. Um, it is quite a bit spiffier than the other tunes, uh, but I've left it on that tune since I've deleted the truck. I've Currently, from the making of this video, I put maybe 60,000 miles uh, on my truck with it at 100 horsepower tune. No tranny issues, nothing like that. I did, however, get tranny tunes along with my tuning. I do recommend it. Uh, it definitely makes the transmission feel completely different. There are quite a few little errors and stuff that the stock trans tuning has um, that your tuner will actually take out. Um, but I haven't had any tranny issues since doing it. I haven't had any other motor problems. Uh, I also do run a 12 valve tune, so I get a little bit better fuel economy. Uh, and it makes the truck sound like an old 12 valve or 24 valve. Uh, it just has that old school tractor sound to it. It sounds great. I'll have to post a video up. I actually might already have one on my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, if not, I'll definitely be posting one. So on my next video, I'll be posting how to tune your truck with the EFI. I'll go and show you guys all on the computer, the emails, um, how to put it on your EFI and all the different steps in order to tune your truck. Uh, it's super self-explanatory, very easy to do, but I'll give you guys a video on how to do that. So in this next part, I'm going to show you guys both the plates that go onto your exhaust manifold. As well, there's a nut that sits the second from the back. Um, this is an additional nut that goes in and replaces the factory one. This will hold in your uh, plate that holds all your tubing and everything like that uh, all your aftermarket parts as well as the stock tubing and all that you can kind of see it in there and the video kind of misses it but right there you can see that aftermarket nut so unfortunately that's all the video that I have um, like I said some of it got lost somewhere it wouldn't keep recording a bunch of little issues um, but like I said if you guys have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below um, I'll try and answer all your questions. Uh, I'll be posting up the how to tune your truck here soon. Um, my truck's actually been in the shop the past couple days because I had a trailer accident, but should be back tomorrow and I'll get on those videos. Um, if you guys have any other specific videos that you want me to make, feel free to ask. Um, other than that, thank you for watching. Uh, this is my first video that I've really done editing on or talked on. Uh, so hopefully it's not too bad. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks.